Yo, what's up guys, so today we are gonna see, what if, Naruto is the only male with chakra, part 1, hope you'll enjoy this video, so before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic, Bear of the Light, link is in the description, and also subscribe to my channel, and like this video. So let's get into the video, our story starts in a land known as the Elemental Nations. This vast land has multiple villages, villages protected by skilled warriors known as Kanoichis. Most females across the elemental nations can harness a power known as chakra. With this force the females can enter the ninja academy, and learn how to become kanoichis, the warriors, and protectors of their villages. Now on the other hand the males cannot use chakra, thus most of the time the males are in charge of tending shops, housework, or being guards for the civilian population. Not to say there aren't male ninjas or shinobis, but they are few, and rarely seen, and they apply to be shinobis, due to having some kind of special ability. The female population is a lot higher than the male population, there are approximately one male for every five females. Due to this ratio, it is not rare to see couples of women getting married, and raising children, however they need to get the help of a man to get said children, since their chakra techniques known as jutsu, have not helped in procreating just in the recreational aspect. Our story starts to unfold in the land of fire, the most powerful of the nations in which resides Kanahagakur, the hidden leaf village, the strongest, and biggest of the hidden villages where we can find a little boy, no older than eight years last laughing happily while chatting with who he sees, as his grandmother, the third Hokage hears in Ser, this boy is called Naruto. Naruto may look like an average boy, however there are some things that make him special. Naruto is the son of Uzumaki Kashina, the fourth Hokage of Kanoha also known, and feared for being the Red Death, decimating armies in a matter of seconds. Also Naruto was part of a big tragedy that happened the very same day of his birth, day that an entity known by the people of the elemental nations, as the Kyubi no Kitsune, the Kyubi attacked, and destroyed a large part of Kanoha, and killed most of the Kanoichis who went, and tried to stop it. It wasn't until Kashina, and her husband Minato Namikis, a shinobi with ability with special seal scrolls, went, and confronted the beast that they were able to stop its trail of destruction at the cost of their own lives, Minato dying, due to the amount of energy that he had to put in the seal, and Kashina due to injuries that the beast gave her. And so the beast was sealed in their son Naruto, due to the nature of the beast, it could not be sealed into an object or any person, it could only be sealed into someone of the Uzumaki family, the reason for this was unknown to the people of Kanoha. After the battle the body of Minato was found along with Kashina who was on the verge of dying, and despite the doctor's best efforts she died, but not before saying her last wish, that her son was to be treated as a hero for keeping at bay the beast that almost destroyed Kanoha. This wish was mostly honored. Most of the Kanoichis knew who Naruto's parents were, while the Kashina was a beloved leader, and was respected by all of the people of Kanoha. Minato was one of the most desired men among the females of Kanoha, and even other places that knew him. And since Naruto had inherited the looks of his father, the young boy was very popular among the Kanoichis who were delighted to look after him, and spoil him with candy, toys, and all kinds of affection. When the Hokage announced who the little baby was after the attack, and that she was going to put him into an orphanage, all the clan heads almost went on a rampage. And so the boy was taken in by the clans going from one clan to another based on a schedule that was negotiated between them. Of course there were some issues with the civilian council, but they were quickly overruled by the Hokage, stating that this was a good way to protect Naruto, while increasing the good relations between the clans. Speaking of the civilian council, they were composed mostly of males representing the civilian side of the population, and they were not happy with the presence of Naruto. While the Kanoichis had a good understanding of the nature of the seal, and held a lot of affection and respect for the parents of Naruto, the men could only see the beast that took away their homes, their wives, and other loved ones, and so they went their way to try to make the worst for the boy. The first attack on Naruto went horribly wrong for the attackers. Some men planned and hired a Kanoichi from another village to try and capture little Naruto when he was five years old, so she tried to capture him while he was returning home from the playground. What the Kanoichi didn't count on was that Naruto was under the charge of the Hayuga clan that day, and, as fast as she went to take the boy she had several Hayuga hot on pursuit. It didn't even take five minutes to have her captured and waiting to be interrogated. After this incident that had three council members executed, and the other two on the watch list, Naruto was more than a little scared of what had happened, and started asking questions. His parentage was revealed to him, but the fact that he had the Kayubi sealed inside of him was still a secret, the Hokage had made it, so that no one could talk about the sealing to nobody that wasn't aware beforehand to risk execution. This was to prevent the younger generations be corrupted by the hate of the males against Naruto. This didn't stop the men from trying to take vengeance against Naruto they just became more careful with the way they did it, and also wary that there were no Kanoichi around. The abuse against Naruto ranged from hateful glares to accidental pushes, that ended with a little Naruto crying on the floor, and bleeding from some wounds due to the fall. Besides this Naruto was a loved and cared child of the village, the incident with the assassin forgotten by his young mind. Well Naruto I'm afraid this is, as long as I can play with you for today said the Hokage with a sweet tone to the kid in front of her. Oh really? So soon? 
pouted Naruto causing the Hokage to giggle a little. I'm sorry Naruto, but I must go back to doing this accursed paperwork. I have told you this before I'm the Hokage, so I must take care of the village's needs. Yeah, yeah I know, but I will be so bored Naruto pouted even more. Don't worry it will be just a little while before Tsum san comes to pick you. Haha <laughs> I will play with the puppies said Naruto excited, and bouncing a little causing the Hokage to laugh at his antics. Well be a little patient, and she will be here soon. The Kiyabu-chan said Naruto with a sad tone. Now Naruto was anything, but a patient kid, always bouncing around full of energy and curiosity. So losing his little amount of patience, he said that he needed to go to the bathroom. The Hokage smiled to him, and continued to do her paperwork while he exits the room, but didn't went to the bathroom. He went outside of the tower in the direction of what he believed was the playground to see if he could find his friends, and play for a while, just to realize he he got lost, and started to sob a little. This attracted the attention of some people a group of men that hated him. It was approaching night, and we could see someone getting near the gates of Kanoha. As the person got closer the Kanoichis guarding the gate could see it was a young man, however they could see it was not a normal young man. The first thing they could see was the way he was dressed. Well dress was not the appropriate word, since he was wearing a suit of armor, a golden chest plate which seemed to be a little dirty, making it look like a really dull orange. He was also wearing armored pants in the same shade. On his back a brown mantle that reached just after his knees, and over it a round shield, big enough to cover all the man's arm length in the same shade, as the rest of the man's armor. On his head a very peculiar helmet, in the Kanoichis's opinion, from the man's front it looked like a diadem, but it covered the man's forehead, and his entire scalp, and on the sides of his head, what looked like chainmail covered all the way until it blended with his armor. While none of the man's hair could be seen due to his helmet, the rest of his face could be seen by the Kanoichis. On his hip was also something that the Kanoichis thought to be a little strange, a hammer, short enough to be wielded with one hand, had a handle wrapped in leather, while the head looked to be made with the same material, as his armor. While they thought he was a good looking man, what really caught the Kanoichis' attention were his eyes, they were pure white eyes with no iris, and no pupils. The man said what the Kanoichis thought to be a greeting while removing his helm to reveal his raven black hair, and a smile reaffirming the Kanoichis' belief that he was a good looking man. The man kept on talking to them, but they could only look at him in confusion, since the man talked in a language unknown to them. Seeing that the girls in front of him seemed lost to what he was saying the man closed his eyes in what the women thought to be thinking, after a moment of silence the man opened his eyes. Hello. Can you understand me now? Said the man to the guards who gave a sigh of relief. Yes, yes we can stranger responded one of them with a smile. Oh thank God. In. I am new around this place, and I have never used this language before. The man laughed a little embarrassed. Have you ever spoken Japanese before? said the other woman in a surprised tone. No I haven't, I can do it with a little device of mine, said the man with a grin now. As I was saying before you could understand me said the man with a joking tone, making the woman jiggle a bit my name is Ragnell Dawnbreaker, and I would like to have access to your town of Kanoha. Well sir I need to see your papers, and also know the reason of your visit. Well the reason of my visit is to speak with your leader the Hokage I think it's called, and also for personal reasons which may involve a more permanent stay in this town, Ragnell said in a very formal tone, as for my papers, I think this will do. Then the man out of thin air, the guards thought, got a set of papers which he gave to the guards. The woman looked a little suspicious of this, but looked at the papers anyway, then looked surprised, and one of the asked, This is a passport signed by the fire daimyo himself. How do you have this? Well the daimyo is a good friend of my father, so when I came to this land I looked for him first, the daimyo, and his samurai do know how to speak Norse however. Well after our talk he gave me these papers, and told me to come here to Kanoha, and look for the Hokage, and that she would help me with my situation. I see, well the papers looks to be in order so we can grant you access, but I don't think the Hokage would be at her office this late, so you will need to wait until tomorrow to make an appointment, one of the guards said to Ragnall, causing him to frown a little at this. Well it's not a problem to be honest, if you would be so kind in telling me the directions of a place where I can spend the night. After a little chat, Ragnall started going in the direction the Kanoichis gave him just to stumble into a scene that made his blood boil. A group of men kicking, punching, and screaming at a little kid who was crying on the floor, seeing this Ragnall, quickly took the shield out of his back, and wielded his hammer running to the men. What is the meaning of this? Screamed Ragnall to the men making them look at him in confusion. They were not worried because he was a man, and not a Kanoichi. We are just teaching this little demon over here a lesson now either joins us or join him in the punching session, said one of the men not even bothering to stop kicking the kid, making Ragnall furious at the man. Stop this foolishness at once or I will be forced to stop you. Ragnell said defiantly making all the men stop, and start circling him. Well bring it on kid, let's see what you got. Said one of the men who had a pipe in his hand, and used it to swing at Ragnell who didn't even bother to use his shield, instead in a show of speed just sidesteps, and drove his hammer into the man's stomach, causing him to fly across the street, and crash against the wall. Meanwhile on the Hokage's office a woman with wild brown hair, and red lines at each cheek, and the Hokage herself, were frantically yelling at each other. That child. Where the hell could he have gone? He knows he can't go away without someone watching him. 
said to Hokage almost yelling in anger and worry. He can't be so far away Hokage-sama he must be somewhere near. The woman said to the Hokage while she was giving instructions to a couple of Anbu ninjas to start searching for Naruto. I know Tsum-san, it's just that it's really late and who knows what could happen to him if he happens to stumble in a bad place. I need to go search for him. Tsum-san please come with me. Of course Hokage-sama said Tsum while following the Hokage who was running ahead of her. Are you okay little one? Asked Ragnell in a gentle tone to the kid crouching in front of him who looked at him with big surprised eyes. Thank you very much sir. Said Naruto in a pain tone, a busted lip, and pain in all his body. Making it evident that he was in a very bad shape after what happened with the men. Speaking of the men a couple of them had escaped. But the ones who remained were there because they were unconscious. And inside of some crater with the shape of their bodies. At this scene the Hokage arrived, after giving a look at the stranger, and the shape that Naruto was she screamed at them, making Ragnell lift Naruto with his shield arm holding him close. If you wish to hurt this child, begin to suffer the wrath of my hammer. Ragnell yelled while pointing at the Hokage with his hammer. No sir. She's my Abuchan. Yelled Naruto at Ragnell making him drop his offensive stance, and placing Naruto on the ground. Oh I see Ragnell sat while Naruto ran at Seru while she hugged him, and yelled at him for running away while Tsum was doing the same. And then they started to hit me, and yell things at me, but then this sir came, and hit the bad man with his hammer, and saved me. Naruto was happily telling the events that happened to the Hokage who looked at Ragnell. Thank you very much sir, you have done me a great favor by protecting this kid, had you not arrived in time, who knows what kind of damage could these people have done to Naruto. I am here as in Seru, Sandame Hokage of Kanoha she says to Ragnell in a very pleased tone. Oh you are the Hokage. Pleased to meet you Lady Hokage, my name is Ragnell Dawnbreaker. Dawnbreaker? Now that's a name that I haven't heard in quite some time said the Hokage in a surprised tone. Now Ragnell san I would like to have a chat with you after we take Naruto Kun to the hospital to treat his wounds. Oh if you don't mind I can take care of that. Heal. Said Ragnell while putting his hands over Naruto's head. His hands were covered in a bright white light for a moment, and Naruto's wounds seemed to disappear, as if nothing had happened to him in the first place. Wow it doesn't hurt anymore Bachan. Said Naruto happily while Seru was awed at this. Interesting skill that you have Ragnell san. Oh that. It's a basic healing tech, nothing too impressive to be honest said Ragnell with a little grin. Well now all that remains is taking care of the thrash. Simsan can you please gather this thing said the Hokage while looking at the unconscious men with disgust, and I will send a squad of Anbu to take them to the Tiandai in a while. Of course Hokage Sama said soon while lifting one of the men, and throwing him without any care on the side of the road. Well Ragnell said now if you follow me we can talk more privately in my office. The Hokage then started walking to the tower with Ragnell, and Naruto following her. Once again I want to say thank you for saving Naruto Ragnell sent said the Hokage while looking at Naruto who was sleeping in one of the couches of her office. Think nothing of it Lady Hokage, it's against my code of honor to do nothing in presence of that situation. However I must ask what has little Naruto done to be receiving such treatment from the people of this town? Asked Ragnell to the Hokage who frowned a little at this. I'm sorry Ragnell san, but it's something I can't tell you, I will only tell you that it is because of the burden that he has to carry, and the hate of the men of this village that can't see past it, the Hokage said with a very sad tone. Does it have anything to do with the untold amount of mana that is sealed inside of him? Asked Ragnell, as if stating the most obvious thing in the world. W what? What do you know about that? Asked the Hokage in a surprised tone. Well my beholder eyes let me see a lot of things, Lady Hokage, one of those things is energy, and I can see that little Naruto has a lot of mana sealed inside of him, said Ragnell, while pointing at his white eyes. So you have some kind of bloodline Ragnell Sen asked the Hokage a little curious, since it is well known that men can't inherit bloodlines. Bloodline? Do you mean a blood curse? Asked Ragnell a little confused. After a little chat Ragnell and the Hokage came to the conclusion that a bloodline and a blood curse were pretty much the same with the exception that the blood curse could be inherited by anyone regardless of gender. Well do these eyes of yours let you see that there's something sealed inside Naruto-kun? Well pretty much the only thing I can get by my eyes is that it is a very very large amount of mana with a malicious nature which makes me believe that you sealed an ancient apparition inside of him. Say what? The Hokage was only getting more confused by the moment. Ragnell then proceeds to explain the nature of ancient apparitions to the Hokage, how they are entities whose bodies were made by raw energy, and had maleficent natures that drove them to attack the people. Well Ragnell san what's sealed inside Naruto san it's pretty much the same, we call them Bijuru, and there are 9 of them in the elemental nations, the one that's sealed inside Naruto kan is known as the Kyubi, the strongest of all the 9. And let me guess, none of your techs or weapons could hurt it, and so you had to seal it inside a baby. Said Ragnell, as if stating the obvious. Well yes Ragnell san, that's exactly what happened. How did you know? Asked the Hokage, the man in front of her didn't stop surprising her. Well you see Lady Hokage, back in Rune Midgard we had to deal with beasts of the same nature, none of them with the amount of energy I feel coming from Naruto. However there were three ways to stop them. 
First we could attack the beast with the same kind of energy that the beast was made of. Option unavailable to you since everyone I've met so far in this land has chakra energy. The second option would be using a psych disruptor to break the body of the beast. However this causes the beast to reform after a while. And well, I don't think you know any psych tinkers do you? Asked Ragnell to receive a shake from the Hokage's head finally the third option was the one you used. Use seals to imprison the beast inside someone's body, so that the beast can be purged at a later date. So you have heard of Jinchuriki before? Asked the Hokage surprised that the man who came from another land, said that the same method was used there. Jinchu what? Asked Ragnell who seemed confused. The people with Vidyus sealed inside of him. Oh? That's what you call them. Well we don't have a name for the people with that kind of seal in them, since most of the time is only a couple of years before the beast is purged, and the person returns to normal said Ragnell, causing the Hokage to go white-eyed. So in your land the Biju could be killed. Well I would not say killed, it's more like absorbed. And could Naruto Khan absorb this mana from the Kyobi? Asked the Hokage with a little hope in her voice. Well many factors are in play when it comes to this. I have to study the nature of the seal, and the nature of Naruto's own energy. But Naruto is a boy, and he has no chakra set the Hokage a little disappointed at what Ragnell was saying. It doesn't matter he could have any other energy. What do you mean Ragnell said? Well, he could have psych energy, or maybe prana. If we are lucky he has a mana circuit like the beast, and the absorption will be easier. The Hokage looked lost through all of this, and Ragnell explained to her the four different energies around the world. He didn't bother to talk about chakra, since she could teach him a thing or two about it, so he started with the mana. While chakra was an energy that bends the elements to have the desired effect on a jutsu, the mana was the same except all the contrary. The mana forced the elements to do the will of the tech user. The prana, also known as kai, is an energy centered in the physical aspect of the body. Another of its characteristics is that most of the time it has no element, and it is mainly used to increase one's fighting abilities. Things such as shooting orbs and beams are also part of things that prana is used for. The psych energy is in the words of Ragnell the most versatile and dangerous of the energies. Since the energy's nature comes directly from the mind of the user, the uses of this energy are as varied as the personalities of the people that use it. Ranging from creating objects to reading minds to affect the will of other people, the psych is incredibly useful, since it's said that a psych user can defeat any enemy with a different energy, thanks to the objects fabricated with this energy. The Hokage listened to all of this with wonder in her eyes, and looking at Naruto she asked Ragnell, Do you think that Naruto-kan has any of these energies you talk about? Of course Lady Hokage one thing is for sure, if you are alive you have energy, it is just a matter of knowing how to unlock it. And how do we know what kind of energy does Naruto-kan have? Well tomorrow, when he's awake, I could perform a scan on him. Usually a single look with my eyes would do the trick, but the amount of energy that the beast has, is blocking my vision of his system. I see, well Ragnell San returning to the matter of your visit, you said your name was Dawnbreaker, any relations with Ragnar Dawnbreaker? Asked the Hokage. Oh yes. Ragnar was my grandfather, did you know he was Lady Hokage? Haha <laughs> yeah I knew him. The Hokage giggled while her eyes got a faraway look, and a trickle of blood ran down her nose. Ragnell coughed a little getting the Hokage's attention also your eyes are the same, as him. He never told me he had that kind of ability tell me what happened to him. Ragnell had a sad look in his eyes while Lady Hokage died, and was taken to Valhalla during the Ragnarok War. The Hokage looked ready to cry while she, and Ragnell took a moment of silence and respect for the phone. You see Lady Hokage, that is the reason I'm here. During the Ragnarok War the most powerful wizard of the kingdom unleashed the ancient apparitions, named after the beasts of the tales Fenrir, Jormungandr, and Nidhegg. At the end the beasts destroyed everything, no one in Rune Midgard survived, I searched for months, and didn't find his soul in all the land. Okami-sama. Say the Hokage in a horrified tone, how could such beasts destroy an entire country like that but how did you survive? And what happened to the beasts? Well remember the methods of getting rid of the apparitions that I told you earlier. I discovered them. I managed to destroy Jormungandr, I could disperse Nidhug, and send his fragmented energy into oblivion. However Fenner proved to be too strong for me, so I used an array of runes to seal it inside me, and then I absorbed it. The Hokage looked in wonder at the man before her, he just told her that he fought three Biju-like creatures, and took them down. Just how strong was this young man? So after all this happened to me, and I found no survivors I started wandering the world learning all I could about the other energies in the world. I come from Rune Midgard, the land of Mana, and I have already gone to learn about the Prana, and Psyche, so this is my last stop. I remember my grandfather telling me tales about this land, and I have met Kanoichis before when the Daimyo came to visit my father, so I knew the existence of the Chakra energy however, besides how it looked I know nothing about it. So you came here to learn more about Chakra, then? Yes I planned on living here for a while to learn more, if it's not a bother, and now I can help little Naruto to discover his own energy. Well after today's events are spread to the Kanoichis, I think you'll find yourself more than welcome to stay, since most of the females think of Naruto-kun, as the son of the village, so you are more than welcome to stay here, 
However, I would like to assess your skills to see if you can be a part of Kanoha's military. Fighting is what I do the best Lady Hokage. I would like that thank you very much said Dragnell with a smile. At that moment, one of the Anbu entered the Hokage's office. Hokage-sama, Tsum-sama is here to see you. Should I let her in? The Anbu acting, as the secretary who had gone home a long time ago. Yes please Nico sent let her in. The Anbu just saluted, and left in a swirl of leaves. tsum sen Excellent timing. I was just going to call for you to take Naruto Khan to your home. Since no one had taken him there I assumed he was still with you, Hokage-sama. Oh you're the one that helped Naruto Khan. Please let me say thank you for what you did. Tsum said, turning to Ragnell who just smiled, and gave a polite nod to her. Actually Tsum said I was wondering if you were able to give Ragnell san here a place to stay for the night. Tomorrow we are going to do something with Naruto, and I want him to be close to do it explained the Hokage to Tsum who looked at Ragnell with a smile. Of course Hokage-sama it's not a problem, it's the least I can do after today. Thank you very much Tsum sen said Dragnell with a smile. Tsum picked up the still sleeping Naruto from the couch, and started heading to the Inuzuka compound followed by Ragnell. After that day Naruto's life started changing in a way he never imagined before. Naruto woke with the sun in his eyes. He tried to cover himself with the blankets to get a little more sleep, but then he remembered what happened the last time. He almost jumped out of the bed in a panic state because he didn't recognize where he was, and a voice called out to him. Oh? Naruto-kun. You're awake already. I was just going to call you for breakfast. Are you okay? You look a little scared the voice belonged to a young girl with long brown hair tied in a ponytail with two locks framing her face. She also had two red markings on her cheeks. Hana-chan. Naruto called at the girl with relief that he saw someone he knew in my in your house. Yes Naruto-kun, my mom brought you here last night along with a man. Bagnell san is here too. If Ragnell is the man with the armor and the big shield, then yes, he's here. Both he and my mom are in the kitchen so wash your face and come quickly. Okay Hana-chan. Naruto said happily while he jumped to the bed and ran to the bathroom to wash himself. When Naruto got to the kitchen he was greeted by Tsum and Ragnell who were speaking at the table along with Kiba, son of Tsum, and one of the few boys that Naruto had befriended since he mostly had female friends. After finishing breakfast Ragnell asked Naruto to stay at the table to have a chat with him, while Tsum and Kiba went to tend the dogs. Just because Kiba couldn't be a shinobi, it doesn't mean that his mom would let him slack off. So Naruto-kun, how are you feeling today? Asked Ragnell in a gentle tone. Very good Ragnell-san, that thing that you did yesterday to me made it like nothing had happened to me. Are you a Kanoichi Ragnell-san? Asked Naruto in a curious tone, causing Ragnell to laugh at his question. Well Naruto-kun, first of all, is a male, so the correct term would be a shinobi I believe, but to answer your question no, I'm not any kind of ninja. But you did a thing with your hand like a ninja, and suddenly I was good. How did you do it? Well Naruto-kun I'm a warrior from the guardian class, we have abilities that let us protect our allies, and take down our enemies. The heal attack that I used is one of the skills of the many branches of the guardian class. Naruto looked at Ragnell in awe, and asked in a timid voice Ragnell san you think I could become a guardian like you? Ragnell looked surprised when Naruto asked this. Naruto-kun why would you like to be a warrior like me? Asked Ragnell curious to the reasons that the boy could have. Well Ragnell said I always hear stories about my parents, and how they live to protect this village, and how they gave their lives to save us from the Kayubi, and I've always wanted to be like them. But when I asked Abba-chan she said that I could not be a ninja because I'm a boy, but I've always wanted to be able to protect the people like Abba-chan and tsum -san. And all the others have protected me, like you did yesterday Ragnell said. That's a really noble reason that you have Naruto-kun, and I'm sure your parents would be proud of you. He said while he put a hand on Naruto's shoulder. Naruto could only smile with watering eyes in the memory of the parents he never knew. Now Naruto-kun I should be able to help you with your dream. It's just a matter of doing a few things to see if I can train you. However you need to have in mind one thing Naruto-kun Ragnell looked at Naruto in the eyes, and got a serious tone in his voice. The road of the guardian is one of self-sacrifice. You can't allow yourself to be selfish. And you must always think of the others around you before yourself. I know you are a little too young to fully understand this, but once you start there's no going back. Are you sure this is what you want, Naruto-kun? Of course Ragnell-san, I will do whatever it takes Databeo. Said Naruto with what he thought was a serious tone, and Ragnell could only smile at the boy's enthusiasm. Okay so we only need to look for Lady Hokage, and we'll get started Ragnell got up to the table, and gestured to Naruto to follow him. And so Ragnell, Naruto, and Tsum went in the direction of the Hokage's tower. Once there they talked to the secretary who said she was expecting them, and after announcing they had arrived, told them to come in the Hokage's office. Agnel san Naruto-kun good morning. Sum san it is good to see you too, but why are you here? Asked the Hokage curious to the Inizuka's matriarch presence. Well Hokage-sama after yesterday I want to keep a closer eye on Naruto-kun, while well, he's on my watch also. Even if he did save Naruto-kun, I cannot fully trust someone I met a couple of hours ago, thought Sum to herself. Fair enough Sum san so Ragnell san have you, and Naruto-kun talked about what we are doing today. We were talking this morning. Lady Hokage and Naruto-kun have told me that he desires to be a warrior to help this village, and its people. 
So if you allow it, I would like to help the boy while I live in this village, said Dragnell, making the Hokage start thinking. I had only planned for Naruto Khan to absorb the Kyobi so that he could get rid of the seal, not for him to become a warrior. This might raise some issues, thought the Hokage Ragnell Sen. I'm not sure if I can allow that. Most of the women of the village are very protective of Naruto Kun. Training him to be part of our military will raise protests and things that just thinking about them gives me a bad headache, said the Hokage, not wanting to face the wrath of all the clan heads, but Abuchan. Yelled Naruto you always tell me I can't be a ninja because I'm a boy. This is my chance to help you all protect Konoha. This is my chance to be a hero like my parents, said Naruto, his voice taking a sad tone at the end. The Hokage could only give a sad smile to the boy. She and Naruto have already discussed this on multiple occasions. They always went nowhere due to the fact that Naruto was a boy and thus had no chakra, but this time it was different. You really want this, don't you Naruto-kun said the Hokage to him while he looked at her with hope in his eyes. I could let you, but I don't know how we are going to convince the council. Well Lady Hokage I might be able to help you with that said Ragnell, taking the attention of everyone in the room. Do you remember the skill test that I was going to take that you told me yesterday? You could invite the counselors to see the test, and I will use some of the skills that I will teach Naruto-kun, and then you can take a decision. Are you aware Ragnell-san? Should you not make it through the test, you could not only lose the chance to teach Naruto-kun, but also the chance to further explore this energy of his said the Hokage with a pointed look to let Ragnell know she was talking about the Kyubi. I am very aware of this lady Hokage, but I have confidence that my skills will let me surpass whatever challenge you put before me. I don't know half of what you both are talking about, but you say are going to train Naruto-kun. Asked Sum in an alarmed tone I'm sorry Ragnell-san, but you are just a man, I don't know what kind of skills you might have, but you can't possibly compare to a Kanoichi of Kanoha. If you think I can, sum san then you should wait till the test to see the result, don't you think? said Ragnall with confidence in his voice. I agree with you Ragnall sent said to Hokage, surprising soon by the way the test will be later on today's evening. Are you okay with this Ragnall sen? It is not like I have anything better to do Lady Hokage said Ragnall with a chuckle. Very well Ragnall sen. Now let's get on to business. How are you exactly going to perform this scan you told me yesterday on Naruto kun? It is very easy for Lady Hokage. I will just send a wave of my own energy through Naruto's body, and then it's just a matter of mapping his energy system. I know the maps of all the energies except for the chakra, but since you said he doesn't have that it shouldn't be a problem said Ragnell while Tsum, and Naruto looked lost through all of this. Now Naruto Kun said Ragnell while crouching in front of Naruto. This may tingle a little bit, but I need you to stay, as calm, as possible okay? Said Ragnell while putting his hands around Naruto's head, and they took a white glow. Haha, <laughs> it tickles said Naruto trying to remain, as still, as possible. Ragnell's hands were still glowing for a moment, and had his eyes closed, while the other two Kanoichis just stared in curiosity, and worried at this. After a few minutes the glow faded from Ragnell's hands, and he opened his eyes, and smiled at the Hokage. It seems we are in luck Lady Hokage, Naruto has a generator mana circuit said Ragnell, while the Kanoichis just stared at him lost to what he had just said. Seeing that he had confused all the people in the room Ragnell proceeded to explain. It means that Naruto Kan here is like me. The mana circuits come in two types. The drawer, and the generator type. The drawer type it's called like that because it draws the mana from some source, be it a relic or the lee lines that run across the earth. This kind can learn very peculiar abilities like stealing the energy from enemies, but have the disadvantage of having very little amount of skill usage, since they can burn the circuit really easily by drawing too much energy. On the other hand the generators, like Naruto Kun and me, have a set reserve of mana that our bodies generate without the need from an external source, and our reserves increase the more we use our mana. However once our reserves exhaust we can't use any more mana until we get a good rest, and we naturally spend more mana on text than the drawers. So, what you are telling me said Tsum trying to understand what Ragnell just explained, is that you and Naruto Khan have something that is like chakra, and can use it for anything, even though you are both males. In my land they are called texts, but it's something like that Tsum sent said Ragnell to Tsum. If that's the case now I'm really looking forward to this test, Ragnell sent Tsum said, still in shock to what she had just learned. N Naba Chan can I go to? I want to see the cool things that Ragnell san is going to teach me. Said Naruto excited to the Hokage. I don't see why not Naruto kun, and you can help me convince the council if things go south through the Hokage to herself. Now please Sum san take Naruto kun to your house, and I will send a ninja for you at the time of the meeting. Ragnell san please stay, we have some matters to discuss privately. Very well Hokage sama said Sum while taking Naruto with her. The boy just said goodbye to the Hokage and Ragnell and followed Sum. Once they left, the Hokage activated a privacy seal on the office, and took a serious look on her face. So Ragnell san you think Naruto kun would be able to get rid of the Kyubi? Yes Lady Hokage, as I said before we are really lucky, not only because he had him on a circuit, but because he had a generator one to boot. 
so I assume that it is something good. Really good Lady Hokage, as I explained before this kind of circuit runs with the reserve. So once Naruto Kun absorbs the beast, his own reserve will be amplified by the amount of mana he absorbs, so he will have a reserve that I can't even compare to. However it will take some time for him to fully absorb the beast, we don't want his circuit to burst, now do we? So approximately how much time are we talking about? I'm not sure Lady Hokage, I still have to study the nature of the seal, but since you said Naruto Kan doesn't know about the beast, we will need to tell him for me to study the seal. Yes, that's what I'm worried about said the Hokage with a frown. Do you need to study the seal in case you start training Naruto? Honestly it would not matter, even if I could study the seal I would not rush the absorption, so that Naruto could develop his own natural reserves, which right now they are nothing to boast about said Ragnell to the Hokage, who gave a sigh of relief. That calms me a bit Ragnell-san, I don't know how Naruto-kun will take the news, and I want to wait until he is a little more mature to tell him. I want him to be able to understand what really happened, and why it happened. I think it would be really terrifying for a boy his age to learn that the beast that almost destroyed the whole village is sealed inside of him you know. Yes I can see what you mean Hokage-sama. Well Ragnell said now all that we need to do now is get you ready for your test. I will call an Anbu to take you to the place where the test will take place, while I will get ready to deal with the clan heads. Now shall we? Said the elder woman getting up from her chair motioning Ragnell to do the same. After your lady Hokage said Ragnell while both of them leave the office. Why would Hokage-sama call for a meeting? And here of all places, is such a drag said a black haired woman who was resting her head on the table in front of her. The woman was known as Shikako Nar, head of the Nar clan. No idea Shikako Chan, but yeah it's really rare for a council meeting to be arranged in the arena's meeting room said a robust red haired woman known as Shoko Akamichi, head of the Akamichi clan. Oh I think you will find a nice little surprise once this meeting has ended Shikako Chan said Tsum, who just entered the room to hear that part of the conversation, along with Naruto who was holding her hand. Seeing him both women smiled, and went to greet the boy. Naruto-kun have you been eating well? Hi Choko-sen. Responded the boy while he was being hugged by the woman, and he could only smile. Naruto-kun so nice to see you, how have you been asked a blonde haired woman with a loving smile on her face? Very well inashi sen Said Naruto to the Yamanaka matriarch. All the people in the room were seated in a room seated in tables somewhat close to each other, giving it the feeling of a classroom. After a while all the clan heads and counselors stood while the Hokage entered the room. Once she was seated all the people followed, while Naruto seated on Tsum's lap, drawing jealous looks from most of the other clan heads. Now I call an order for this meeting. I know that a lot of you have questions about the nature of this meeting, but first I need to know how many of you are aware of the recent events that involved Naruto Khan here after seeing that none of the clan heads, for the exception of Tsum, knew what she was talking about she told them that how Naruto escaped, and how he got lost, and was attacked. After reassuring them that Naruto was okay, the clan heads returned to their seats, having leapt from them to examine the boy. After that the Hokage told them that they found that Naruto was saved by a man. This man is here today because after his actions to save Naruto-kun, I have learned some interesting things about him. First of all he's not from this land. He's not from the elemental nations altogether. Also he has some peculiar skills. Skills that he's confident enough to test against some of our elite Kanoichis. So I have decided to test him. And should he pass I'll allow him to form part of Kanoha's forces. Are you sure this is really necessary Hokage-sama? Spoke in a calm tone a black haired woman, the matriarch of the Ichiha clan, Mikoto Ichiha. It's as much as I owe the young man for saving Naruto-kun from Kami knows what those men could have done to Naruto-kun said the Hokage, letting the women know that this is something that was going to happen no matter their opinion. Now please Inu-san, can you call Ragnall san in? She said to one of the Anbu hidden in the room, a swirl of leaves was the only thing that indicated someone was standing in the back of the room. A moment later a young man entered through the door, however what he was wearing looked a lot different to what the Hokage and Tsum had seen him wear before. On his chest where before was a breastplate that covered his entire torso up until his waist now was another one. But this one only covered half of his torso, and was a bright shining golden color instead of the dirty orange. It had shoulder protectors making his shoulders look broader. He was wearing a white shirt underneath the piece of armor. On his back where before was a brown mantle made of some kind of leather, now was a cape blue on the outside, and white on the inside. It looked to be made of some kind of exotic fabric, and was decorated with odd symbols that none of the women could recognize. On his legs were no more the armored pants that he wore, instead he was wearing plain black jeans with high black leather boots, and on his hands plain brown leather gloves. His shield and hammer were nowhere to be seen, noted the Hokage. Good evening ladies, my name is Ragnell Dawnbreaker said the man taking a slight bow it is a pleasure to meet you all he said with a smile. None of the Kanoichis were impressed by the man, he didn't look like a warrior at all in the eyes of the Kanoichis, and they couldn't feel any kind of power from him. PSST Hiromi, is he someone you know? His eyes kinda look like one of your clan. 
murmured Inashi to a woman with long black hair and white eyes. She was the head of the Hayuga clan. That's not someone I know Inohi-san. I will admit that his eyes look somewhat like the Byakugan, but I can clearly see that he has no chakra network at all. Also you know that the males can't inherit the Byakugan she responded back with a serious tone, while still looking at Ragnell with her eyes activated. Now Ragnell-san, and I have talked a little about the reasons for his visit to Konoha, and he has expressed his desire to stay in the town. I also became aware that he is the grandson of a friend that I held very close to my heart, so I decided to give him a chance. Should he be able to pass the test we have a lot of matters to discuss. So please let's not delay this anymore after saying this the Hokage, along with the rest of the people of the room, who went to sit in the spectator seats of the arena while Ragnell stood in the middle of it. Now Ragnell san you may not be aware of this, but the ninja arts are composed of several branches. Now we are going to test your skills by pitting you against some of the best specialists in some of the branches, and see how you do against them. The first one you will be fighting against will be our Tujutsu specialist Mike Gal. As soon as the Hokage said this, a woman with short black hair, big eyes, and eyebrows wearing a green spandex suit entered the gates of the arena. Yash. It seems like I will be your first opponent today Ragnell Sen. Said Gal to Ragnell in a sweet and energetic voice. Know this Ragnell Sen, the Hokage told me to not go easy on you, even though you are a man, so be prepared to face the beautiful green beast of Kanoha. Elsen I will be offended if you went easy on me, I will try my best, so I expect my opponent to do the same in return said Ragnell with a smile. Your flames of youth burn brightly Ragnell San let us fight. Said Gal while the rest of the Kanoichi just sweat dropped at the Kanoichi's antics. Now Ragnell San are you ready to start asked the Hokage. Just a moment lady Hokage, armor change tech. Assault armor. The voice of Ragnell took an echoing tone while he was engulfed in a bright light for a moment. When the light faded most of the Kanoichis looked impressed. The armor in his chest had extended to cover all of his body in the same golden metal. There was no place in his body uncovered by his armor from the neck down. The gloves and boots that he wore before also were replaced by the golden armor. He had short spikes sprouting from his shoulders, elbows, and knees. On his chest and forearms were more of the symbols that the Kanoichis had noticed on his cape, which had disappeared. After this he crossed his left arm on his chest and raised his right arm. Wordlessly a flame swirled on his left and a lightning struck his right. From the flame the shield from before appeared, but it looked like the rest of his armor, and from the lightning his hammer that also had the golden shade. Ready whenever you are said Ragnell after his little display. Okay just to remember this is just a test, if I tell you to stop both of you will do it at once is that clear? After a nod from both of them the Hokage gave the signal for them to start. Just as the Hokage gave the signal Ragnell with an extraordinary amount of speed, launched himself a gal trying to sweep her legs with her hammer. His speed surprised Gal briefly, so she jumped to avoid the hit. Ragnell was still mid-swing, as he saw Gal jumped, so he tried to punch her with the edge of his shield. Gal saw the move, and blocked by crossing her arms. The blow sent her backwards, but with a simple flip she landed gracefully. Gal could only smile briefly at his opponent, and both of them jumped at each other to trade blows. How the hell is he so fast? I mean not just because he's a man, he's wearing a suit of armor that must weigh ton. Inashi said, as she couldn't believe what she was seeing, the other clan heads could only stare in silent wonder at the battle before them. Gal was getting a little irritated, even while she wasn't at her max speed most of her blows had been either dodged or blocked by the shield. She had managed to get a couple of blows on the man he hadn't even flinched, and he kept trying to counterattack. Just as Gal had tried a right hook, Ragnell blocked it with his shield, and jerked it in the opposite direction, making an opening in Gal's defense for a second, second, in which he brought his hammer up to strike Gal right in the chin. The blow threw Gal on the floor, but she quickly stood and took her stance. Gal was still a little disoriented by the blow, but kept on fighting. This pattern continued for a while. Gal delivered blow after blow to Ragnell while he just dodged, blocked, and if he got hit just brushed it off as nothing. Then after finding an opening Ragnell struck her with his hammer. She got up and started all over again. After a while the Hokage signaled them to stop. Both fighters breathing heavily smiled at each other. I'm really impressed Ragnell sent said Gal with a smile. Both fighters just smiled, gave a bow in respect to each other, and Gal left the arena. Next we have our ninjutsu specialist, Inusan. Could you please enter the arena? Said the Hokage motioning to an Anbu with a dog mask. The Anbu wordlessly entered the arena and stood in front of Ragnell. The Hokage then gave the signal to start. Kaden. The Kaku no Jutsu said the Anbu after making some hand seals firing at Ragnell Ju, just stood in place not bothering to even raise his shield. The flames collided directly against him creating an explosion, after the flames faded Ragnell remained in the same position, as if nothing had happened. Not even bothering to stop and ask questions the Anbu made more hand seals, and put her hands on the ground. Doten. Dorita no Jutsu from the ground, sprouted the head of a dragon made of earth that opened its mouth, and multiple rocks shot from his mouth. Seeing the incoming projectiles Ragnell raised his shield to block them, after the dragon crumbled Ragnell pointed at the Anbu with his hammer, and with echoing voice just said stay put. 
The brief light shone under the Anbu's feet, and Ragnell started running towards her. The Anbu saw him coming, and went to dodge just to discover that the earth around her feet had somehow melted, and that she couldn't move. Ragnell took a swing of his hammer to hit the Anbu who used a Kawarimi to get out of the way of the hammer. Ragnell was very surprised to see he had hit a log, and that the girl was nowhere to be seen. He started looking for her when he noticed her standing near some pond that was in the arena going through hand seals. So you had a no jutsu said the Anbu, while a huge dragon made of water rays from the pond, and headed towards Ragnell, his eyes almost bulged out of his sockets looking at the dragon. Thinking quickly he crouched, and put his shield in front of him, and set shield tech. Burning sun. The shield got covered by a bright light, just as the water dragon collided against it. A gigantic column of steam rose from Ragnell's position, after it dispersed it revealed him looking a little soaked, but otherwise fine. Ragnell threw his hammer at the Anbu who just dodged the hunk of metal, seeing that the hammer landed close to the woman Ragnell said Mjolnir's blessing. Blink. As soon as Ragnell ended the phrase a crack of lightning hit the hammer, and he appeared over it, next to the Anbu who was caught off guard. He a man had performed something like a shunshin, taking the chance Ragnell drew his right hand that was covering in a bright light, and yelled to Onbringer, and punched the Kanoichi square in the chest. When it made contact with the Kanoichi flames bursted from his fist, and sent the Anbu flying until she hit one of the walls of the arena where she slumped, and didn't move anymore. Ragnell moved, and went to see if she was okay. He gave a sigh of relief when she looked to be breathing. After the Hokage declared Ragnell the winner he used his heel tech on the Anbu who immediately reacted, confused at what had just happened. Now that is really impressing said Shikako to the other clan heads, it's not every day that someone defeats Inu, never mind that she got defeated by a man. I admit that if I was in her position I probably would have lost, as well, I would have never expected a man knowing a technique that allowed him to change position so quickly, and that technique that he used to finish her look very powerful. As well said soon, causing the other woman to give a nod at her statement. Now Ragnell sent said to the Hokage for the last part of the test, we would like you to fight against our Jinjutsu specialist. Kurana Yuhi please enter the arena. A woman with long black hair and red eyes entered the arena. She was wearing the standard uniform. The Hokage gave the signal to start. As soon as the Hokage gave the signal Kurana went through hand seals. Majin. Jubaku Satsu said Kurunai while Ragnell kept his guard up for anything that could happen, after a while nothing happened, and the people in the room started murmuring. Kurunai tried a bunch of Jinjutsus against Ragnell, but none of them appeared to have any effect on him. After thinking about it for a moment the Hokage stood. Kurunai said please stop, I think I might be able to explain why none of your Jinjutsu are affecting Ragnell san. As all of you know it is performed by altering the chakra in the brain of the target, however Ragnell san here has no chakra to manipulate hence no effect. The Hokage Sama, he definitely was using techniques against Inu Sensei Choko, so the Hokage briefly explained how Ragnell had mana instead of chakra, and how it was something entirely different. While that theory seems plausible Hokage Sama most of our Kanoichis can use against bandits, robbers, and other kinds of male enemies, and it works just fine said Shikako, making the other clan heads not an affirmation to the woman's point. I'm aware of Shikako-san, but none of those men could use the energy that Ragnell-san can use, it seems like we need to investigate this further. But at the moment we'll return to the meeting room, and discuss Ragnell San's performance. Now Ragnell San please return to the waiting room while we discuss this matter. Said the Hokage while she, and the clan had stood, and walked out of the arena. Now after this amazing performance from Ragnell San said the Hokage to the clan heads who were once again seated in the arena's meeting room. Naruto was not there. The Hokage had asked one of her Anbu to take him to the playgrounds, since they were going to discuss matters that he couldn't know at the moment, namely the Kayubi. I would like to know your opinions about the skills that he displayed to us today. Well before anything Hokage-sama said Shikako standing to speak as you explained to us before Ragnell san here doesn't use chakra in his techniques, so he is not a ninja then Ragnell san exactly what kind of warrior are you? As I had said to Lady Hokage before, Shikako, Shikako-san, my kind were known as the Guardian class, but I'm from the branch of the Einarjar, so you may say I'm a Einarjar Guardian. And in which area do you specialize in continued Shikako with her questions? Well Shikako-san, the Guardian class in general is a frontline class. We have an incredible amount of resistance allowing us to absorb big amounts of damage without even noticing it, and our techs are largely used for either supporting our allies or disabling our enemies, so that our teammates can finish the job. So from where you work in teams to Ragnelsen, said a woman with short hair and dark glasses who was wearing a high collar jacket known as Chibi Aburum. Yes, that would be correct. The party system was used always when the kingdom required a mission to be completed. Very rarely missions were done solo. The parties were formed by groups of three to four people. The protocol said that the party always needed one tank and one supportive class since we the guardians entered in the tank category. I most of the time was selected for missions. I admit curiosity to the armor you are wearing Ragnell san. We all saw how you changed this armor to the used you used in the fights. Is this the same armor you were wearing when you came to Kanoha? Asked soon to Ragnell since he had changed his armor once again to the one with the short breastplate with the blue cape. 
Oh yes, Sum San, this is the same armor, but with three different shapes that you have seen. The one in which you saw me yesterday was my armor in travel mode. It has a dull color to not call too much attention, and the mantle is brown to cover myself in it, and blend with my surroundings if I don't want to be noticed. It gives a fair amount of protection while being very light so, as the name suggests is the best armor for traveling long distances. Now this armor I'm wearing right now is what I call my casual armor. It is armor with poor protection, but it's only used in meetings, and places where you know there will not be any fights, it's just to cause a good impression. And the armor you saw I was using during the fights was my assault armor, as the name of the tech I used suggested, it's a balanced armor, it gives me equal amounts of power, defense, and speed. It's an armor mode I use when I don't know the abilities of my opponent. I have some more modes, but I don't think it's necessary to explain them right now. Agnel san I would like you to explain the first technique that you used against Inu san. My Byakugan only detected how the ground around Inu san melted for a moment said Hiromi. Oh that was my solar flare tech, before I entered into the Ainajar branch I was a solar guardian, warriors that used the power of the sun to shine upon the darkness of evil. That was one of the solar branch techs, it's pretty much what you said, it melts the ground around the target's feet, causing it to be unable to move for a moment. I didn't expect her to be able to teleport out of it however. So that technique that you use with your hammer when you teleport it next to it was an Ainajar technique. Asked Shikako to Ragnell who just gave a shake of his head. No Shikako-san, as a matter of fact I didn't use any Ainajar techs in the fights before. The blink tech was something my grandfather invented with his extensive knowledge in runes. He used to tell me how he was trying to arrange the runes in a way so that the hammer returned to the owner's hand, but he got that effect instead. He liked the uses that it had, so he kept it in the rune array when he crafted the hammers explained Ragnell with a chuckle remembering this story. So should we assume that the technique you used to stop Inu Suryudin, and the one you used to finish her were also solar techniques? Asked the Hokage interested in Ragnell's explanation. That would be correct Lady Hokage, although my burning sun is a shield tech so, as it suggests it can only be used with a shield, but a solarite shield is better for its use. Solarite? What's that? That's the metal that my armor, shield, and hammer is made of. It's a special metal that increases the effectiveness of solar techs. It's also really resistant to high temperatures, making the wearer invulnerable to fire. So that's how you evaded Inu's Kakaku. Asked Choko to Ragnell who just gave a positive nod to respond to the woman's question. Would it be possible to get a hold of more solarite? Even in small amounts ninjas equipped with some kind of gear that makes them impervious to Kaden, would be very good for our forces. I'm sorry Lady Hokage, but that's not possible. The armor, shield, and hammer are given to you after the Oath to the Sun. If the three items appear to you in the ceremony, it means that your oath has been accepted, and you are pronounced as an official solar guardian. Even if you somehow got hold of pure solarite it would not matter. The heat resistance is so high that the solarite can be melted in any known way. The Hokage looked disappointed at this, but said nothing, understanding that Ragnell could do nothing about it. Well now that we have seen a part of what Ragnell Sand can do, I dare say most of you, if not all, agree with me that he would be a great asset to have among our forces, and that he must be included in them. Any opinions against Ragnell Sand joining us? Asked the Hokage to all the clan heads, none of the women said anything against it. Now Ragnell Sen I would say that you have low jown in level of Tajutsu, you only used a few techniques in your ninjutsu test, but you demonstrated that you could use them offensively, and defensively, and it seemed that you were unaffected by, but you are incapable of doing them is this correct Ragnell Sen? As I understood your explanation of Lady Hokage that would be correct, none of my techniques allows me to create any kind of illusions. That's a kind of ability used by the mage or even the assassin classes responded Ragnell to the Hokage's question. Due to this I don't know in what rank I can classify you, I don't even know if I can classify you, as a shinobi at all. Well back in Rune Midgard I was paladin rank. You see Lady Hokage the command chain was like this. First were the novices, people in training who were just learning how to use their mana. Then were the squires, there were those that had a good handle of their mana, and were already training in the use of the basic guardian techs. Then were the knights who were people that went to learn techs of a specialized branch, the solar branch in my case, and lastly the paladins. The paladins were people that had an extraordinary situation, and because of it could access to training in a legendary branch, the Ainajar branch in my case. So what situation did you face to gain legendary training Ragnell Sen? Asked Shikako. Well ma'am, I did something that earned me a ticket to the Valhalla, the Hall of the Fallen Warriors. Regularly once you entered Valhalla you're stuck in there until Ragnarok comes, but my action allowed me to get training, and then return to Rune Midgard. But what exactly did you do to enter this place? I'm sorry, but I was sworn to secrecy about that. If I said what I did, and someone else tried to do it, it would most likely cost the life of whoever tried to set Ragnell in a tone that let the woman know that he would say nothing else. So in our registry you will be classified as a guardian of paladin rank, however that will mean that you have no rank over the Jounin of the village, so you will be on Chunin level in the command ladder. This can be revisited later on, once we see how Ragnell San performs in missions, any objections? 
asked the Hokage to the clan heads. None of them objected the decision. Now that we are finished with this matter we have another one that requires our attention, and it has to do not only with Ragnell San here, but also with Naruto-kun. That's the reason he was here to see Ragnell San fight. But is it in this part of the meeting once the Hokage said Naruto? She had the full attention of the women. It appears that Naruto-kun has the ability to use mana, the very same energy that Ragnell San has showed us today. And he told me in a chat we had earlier, that he wants to be a warrior like Ragnell. You are not possibly thinking about letting him train, are you Hokage-sama? Was one of the many shouts going across the room. Once she managed to calm them down she continued. You must think about this. If Naruto-kun manages to become a guardian like Ragnell san not only we will gain a valuable asset to our forces, but also we can be more relaxed knowing that Naruto-kun can defend himself in the case of another attack on him. Or I don't think I need to remember you the amount of threats we have received from Iwa to deliver Naruto-kun. Just because they want vengeance on his parents, with him training, we'll know that he can defend himself if they try to send any assassins. The Hokage tried to reason with the woman, and while they could see the reason behind the Hokage's words, Naruto sounded like a son to all of them having raised him since he was but a little baby. The Hokage then retold them the talk he had with Naruto that morning, how he said that he wanted to protect the village like his parents, and how he wanted them to be proud of him. It was a low blow to guilt trip them, but it was worth it in the Hokage's opinion. There's also one more reason I want to see Naruto training. Ragnell san was able to tell that Naruto-kun had the Kyubi inside of him just by looking at him, and he told me how he had encountered beings of the Biju nature, and he said that Naruto can absorb it, and we can get rid of the Kyubi forever continued the Hokage, which just started another round of discussions between the women. Ragnell then proceeded to tell them about his beholder eyes, the ancient apparitions, and how he used an array of rune seals to absorb Fenrir in himself. So you want to train Naruto-kun to be an Einerjar like yourself Ragnell san Asked Choko making him shake his head. Ainajar training must be earned, and I can't teach it, only Anisa can do it. I want to train Naruto to be a solar guardian like I used to be explained Ragnell. After a couple of hours of discussion, the pros outweighed the cons of training Naruto, and it was decided that Ragnell could train Naruto, not before making him swear an oath, and threatening him with castration, decapitation, and lots of other colorful things, should something happen to Naruto. The Hokage then announced the meeting was over, and soon went to the playgrounds to search for Naruto since he was still under her care, and Ragnell followed close behind. One of the topics of the meeting was the place where Ragnell's would live. The clan heads decided that whoever was in care of Naruto, had to give a place to Ragnell too, so that he could train Naruto easily, at least that was the official statement, but what the women really wanted, was to keep an eye on him, so that nothing bad happened to Naruto. Since then Ragnell started to train Naruto in the mornings while in the evenings he went either to the library or to the academy to start learning about chakra. At the start of the training Ragnell learned that thanks to the clan heads Naruto was a smart boy. The boy knew how to read, and knew basic maths. He was also learning to cook, and was well-mannered, but was a little brash sometimes, and liked to play pranks on people. He also learned that the boy had no idea how to fight, had no survival skills or any other skill that could help him in a battle. Ragnell had suspected it, but after a while it became clear to him that the clan heads were grooming Naruto to become a house husband to one of their daughters. However Ragnell saw this in a positive light, saying that this meant he was not tainted by a ninja style, and that he could start with a clean slate. Ragnell started by teaching Naruto to meditate to help him unlock his mana. After he managed to unlock it, he taught him a tech to cast a flame in his finger. Naruto called it the lighter tech, much to Ragnell's amusement. This was to help Naruto spend his mana, and start increasing his reserves. After some incidents in which Naruto almost burned a house with a little flame, Ragnell decided to start with the physical exercises. Ragnell entered the garden of the Hayuga compound, which was in charge of Naruto's care for the next few days. When he entered he saw Naruto playing with a girl with short black hair that he recognized from a previous meeting. Hello Naruto-kun, Hinata-sen said Ragnell to the kids who waved at him with a smile today I have something for you Naruto-kun. Really Ragnell-sensei? Asked Naruto, as he had decided to call him since the start of their training what is it? Where is it? Is in my inventory room, let me get it out for you said Ragnell, while well, he put a hand over his brown leather glove. There were some sparks of light, and Ragnell said Tada. What he had in his hand made Naruto give him a deadpan look. What's that supposed to be sensei? Said Naruto looking at the object. It was a chest plate, but it was completely made of what looked like brown wood. Well this is your first training armor Naruto Kun said Ragnell to Naruto who pouted a little, but I wanted a cool, shiny armor like yours. Said the boy while Ragnell laughed, and you will have it in due time, but first your body must become used to wearing armor, and since the solarite is so dense it weighs a lot compared to other materials, if you don't train your body just a chest plate could crush your bones. Now stop whining, and put it on said Ragnell to the boy, while handing him the wooden armor. Naruto took it, but it almost fell from his hands, with some effort he managed to raise it, and put it on. The armor covered only his chest, and stomach until the waist. His arms were not covered, and his neck was visible. Hanada was giggling a little while looking at him, and Naruto shot a glare at her. 
She put a hand on her mouth, but she only managed to giggle more. Ugh, it is really heavy said the boy with a little effort in his voice. See? Now imagine the weight of a metal one. And that's only the first piece. You still need the helm, the shoulder pads, the bracers, the gloves, the boots, and the leg guards. Then add to that the weight of the shield and your hammer. For now that will be enough but, as soon as you get used to that weight, we'll start adding more pieces. Now you're not allowed to remove your armor under any situation including sleeping, you can only remove it to take a bath. When Ragnell said this, Naruto's eyes bulged out of his head, knowing that his training was only going to get harder from now on. It has been a couple of months since Naruto started training with Ragnell. Now besides the chest plate Naruto was covered from head to toe in some sort of wooden gear. In his head was a wooden cap that covered his head hiding his hair, his forearms, and shin were also covered by wood pieces. On his back was a buckler, also made of wood, and on his right hand, he was carrying what looked like a wooden mallet that was too big for him. Ragnell had worked with him a lot on his physical endurance, and while his young body didn't show any signs of it he was stronger than before. Ragnell had also changed a little the boy's diet, while the clan heads kept the boy eating a healthy and balanced diet, not to mention his obsession with ramen. He needed a bigger protein and calorie intake to increase the effectiveness of the training, so Naruto was eating a lot more than he used to, except when he was in the Akimichi's care. His food while in there was pretty much the same if not more. Now we find Naruto, Kiba, and his puppy Akimaru. Even if Kiba wasn't supposed to become a ninja, the male Inizukas got a dog partner to protect them. They were going to the roof of the Hokage Tower where they were supposed to meet Ragnell. After a couple of weeks in Naruto's training Kiba asked to be trained too. His mother told him that he couldn't train with them because he didn't have energy like Naruto. Ragnell told her that while the boy didn't have mana, he showed signs of being able to use psych energy. Ragnell then explained to Tsum that the psych energy was a mental energy, and since Kiba was cough more brawn than brains, it was not as powerful as it could be, but that he could work with it. After a lot of convincing from Naruto and Kiba and another council meeting, Ragnell promised to train Kiba too, after he got in contact with someone he knew, today was the day that he was going to reach his contact. After a brief chat with the Hokage, who came along with the boys, they reached the top of the tower. Ragnell sensei are you here? Yelled Naruto looking for the man. Over here Naruto-kun. Responded Ragnell waving at them standing in front of a weird box that had a hole with a screen in it. Very interesting thing you have there Ragnell-san, may I ask what is it? said the Hokage while the boys looked curiously at the box. As you know Lady Hokage I had promised Kibikon here that I will start training him once I made contact with some people I know. This is a homemade transmitter that, hopefully, will let me make contact with them. Now did you do what I asked Naruto-kun? Asked Ragnell to Naruto who nodded and handed him two blue glowing crystals. You never explained me what were those sensei. I worked really hard to make them glow like that too. These Naruto are mana crystals. These are made from a mineral that can store large amounts of mana. They have a couple of uses, the drawers can store mana in them, and draw it out of the crystals later if needed, or like we are going to use them today, they can power certain mechanisms. I knew it would take me some time to build this transmitter, so I figured that in the meanwhile you could charge them, and it would help you build your reserves. Now, I only need to put them here, and it will be all set then Ragnell got behind the box, and opened it, the Hokage, and the boys heard a clicking sound, and he closed the box again. Here we go, cross your fingers Ragnell pressed a button on the box, the screen then showed a lot of sparks, and started to make sounds, the Hokage remembered the static in the radios. Looking at the screen the man started to press buttons on a board in front of the box let's see the frequency was this, and coordinates like this I think, I hope this works a few moments later a blurry image appeared on the box, it looked like a woman with black hair, and glasses. Please identify yourself, and state the reason of your transmission the woman talked in a language that neither the Hokage nor the boys could understand. Courtney, is Ragnell, do you copy me? Ragnell responded back to the woman in the same language which surprised them. Lord Ragnell, is it you? From where are you transmitting, the signal is so poor, and weak. I'm currently in the elemental nations, to the south of the continent. I constructed a homemade transmitter, but I had to replace a lot of the circuits with runes, and I'm powering it directly with mana crystals, which may have affected the quality of the signal. I also don't know how long the runes will last. You never stop amazing me Lord Ragnell, do you still have that supply beacon with you? I think I do, I have it sealed in one of my runes if my memory serves me well. Then please set it up, once you do I the woman couldn't finish her sentence, as the transmitter make a loud noise from the inside, and smoke started raising from it. Oh shit. Water, I need water said Ragnell to the Hokage, but he was still talking in the same language as before. She looked at Ragnell who was freaking out, but she guessed what he wanted, and used a small on the box that was catching on fire. Thanks Lady Hokage said Ragnell sighing in relief, and talking once again in Japanese while the materials on the box were not important, these are my last mana crystals. If I lose them who knows how long it would take me to get more. So, can you train me now Ragnell-san? Asked Kiba excitedly at Ragnell who gave a shake of his head. I still don't know Kibasan, it looks like the runes couldn't take the strain, and the transmitter exploded before I could get to it. 
However, Courtney asked me to set up my supply beacon. If we are lucky, trailed off Ragnell as he put a hand over his glove, and after a spark of light, he was holding several pieces of wood with odd letters in them. Now let's see three fourths times. Ah, here it is. Oh, said Ragnell while looking at one of the pieces in victory. Ragnell put the piece of wood on the floor, and like with his glove, he put a hand over it, and a large spark of light erupted from it. After the sparks dissipated, a large machine stood on the floor. It looked like a platform, but on one of the sides, it had a board with buttons like the one that Ragnell was using on the transmitter. Ragnell then went to the wet and smoking transmitter, and after giving a yell of victory, ripped the top of the box, revealing a bunch of wires, then he put the mana crystals, and connected the beacon to it. Won't this machine explode too if you use that again Ragnell sen asked the Hokage. Hopefully it will not since I am using only the energy converter. I only need to power the beacon up, and send the distress signal. What I'm hoping for is that Courtney remembers my beacon id, and she will send me a real transmitter Ragnell pressed some buttons on the board. A few minutes later a ray of light from the sky covered the platform of the beacon, after the light disappeared a box like the one Ragnell made, but neither looking, and a bunch of other stuff was on the platform. Yes. Now we are talking. The good transmitter, an energy conversion unit, and a wide range antenna. Now let's get this set up the Hokage, and the boys only watched curiously, as Ragnell set up the machine. After a while he finished, and turned on the machine, it showed a bunch of symbols, and Ragnell pressed buttons on another board. After a few moments the face of the woman showed up, and Ragnell could see her much more clearly. It seems that you received the package Lord Ragnell once again they started talking in that unknown language. After a chat Ragnell explained to the woman how he had found a boy that could use psych energy, but that he had no idea in which area he could train the boy, he also gave her an estimate of the psych power that the boy had. It's very odd that you found a psych user in the south continent Lord Ragnell, but anyway if you think the boy can be trained, you know you have the full consent of the association to do so. As for the boy training area you know I can give him a psychological test to see which area would suit him better, so you want to talk with the boy. Yes if that's possible, also in private, you know how this kind of evaluation goes. Okay, I will tell him, also you should set your Babel engine to Japanese when you talk to him, they talk that here. Noted, I assume you will contact me later when everything is ready. After saying goodbye Ragnell turned off the machine, and turned to Kiba, and talked normally once again. Well Kiba said it seems that there will be no problems to start your training however Courtney wanted to ask you a couple of questions. Before we begin said Kiba to the boy who looked happy, and surprised. That lady that was talking with you wants to speak with me. Yes Kiba said it's only a couple of questions to decide which kind of training will suit you better. Ragnell then resealed all the machines in his rooms, and they returned to the Inuzuka compound where he set them up again. Once he did, Ragnell called Courtney once again, and Kiba talked with her, in Japanese much to Kiba's relief. After a couple of hours Kiba called Ragnell saying that Courtney wanted to speak with him. He went to the room where they set the transmitter. So how did he do? Asked Ragnell to Courtney, and she smiled a little. He's a good boy, not the brightest bulb in the box, but he's still young, nothing that can be fixed. And what about his training? Though he's definitely an infiltrator, bronze over brains, prefers close-up encounters, and uses his senses to fight. I also met that puppy of his, with a little bit of training he will be a very good companion. Wow an infiltrator. You realize I can't make heads or tails of that right? And also he will need a lot of items. Yes, you don't worry about that, Lord Ragnell. I will trust you with his CQC training, but I'll have one of our agents train him in the use of his psych, and the gadgets over the transmitter if that's possible. That would be perfect Courtney thank you very much. I'll just talk it with the boy's mother, and tomorrow we'll set the schedules. After finishing the conversation Ragnell he went to find Kiba who was with Tsum and Naruto. So Kiba said I finished my talk with Courtney, and it seems like you're an infiltrator. That sounds so cool Kiba. What's an infiltrator Ragnell sensei? Asked Naruto who made the adults chuckle with his question. Well Naruto-kun, an infiltrator, is, as the name suggests, an expert in infiltration and espionage. They are able to pass security systems, and guards undetected to assassinate or take information from a facility. They are able to either fight people up close, and personally or demolish buildings with their different skills. It's an area that requires high stealth and precision, and a body endurance to fight, and take out targets if notice. That sounds a lot like a ninja Ragnell sensei Tsum, and Ragnell nodded her. Yes most assassin classes, which the infiltrator comes in, are like the ninjas. Also Courtney told me that you may be able to train Akamaru to work in a team with Yukiba-san, if you are not against it tsum san Does Akamaru have psych energy too? Asked Tsum to him he just shook his head. No, Akamaru has chakra energy. I have noticed that male animals can have it, although I don't know why is that. Now how are you going to train Akamaru then? Asked Tsum. The infiltrator dogs doesn't require to use any energy, just a couple of gadgets, and learn some orders. And they already explained Ragnell to the woman who nodded understanding. You know that I want to supervise what my son is going to learn right. That should not be a problem Tsum san If you wish tomorrow you can speak with Courtney, and ask her if you have any doubt about Kiba's training Ragnell said, making Tsum feel a little relaxed. A couple of months passed since the start of Kiba's training. 
It was hard for the boy to unlock his psych, but once he did things flowed smoothly for him. Naruto's training was also going well, he was still wearing the wooden armor, since his body wasn't used to it at the moment, but he was learning some texts from Ragnell. Now both boys were on a training ground along with Ragnell, Tsum, and the Hokage. The boys were going to have a spar, and the women wanted to see the fruits of their training. Naruto was wearing his wood armor, while Kiba was wearing a long sleeve black skin tight shirt, and camouflage pants with a black bandana, with Kanoha's symbol sewn on it. Akamaru was at his side, the puppy was wearing what looked like a flak jacket with many pockets, and in one of them a combat knife was stored. Okay boys remember don't do anything too messy, repairing the ground is too expensive. As soon as Ragnell gave the signal Kiba launched at Naruto. He gave him a couple of punches while he blocked with his shield. The strength of Kiba's punches added to the weight of his own armor, made Naruto unable to counter attack, however he was making a very good job at blocking his strikes. Kiba saw that he was getting nowhere, so he leaped back, and raised a hand in the air to show he was holding a ball of bright light. He then brought his hand down, and smashed the ball of light on the ground where it exploded, and released a flash of light that made everyone cover his eyes. What was that Ragnell said? Said the Hokage who was also affected by the attack. That Lady Hokage was a flashbang, one of the infiltrator's grenade techniques. They gather photons in a sphere that they throw to make a diversion explained Ragnell to the Hokage. Once Kuba saw that Naruto was blinded by the flashbang he re-engaged Naruto in the fight. Shield tech. Defender. Yelled Naruto, as he was still blurry. His shield took a golden glow, and, as Kuba was going to take a hit on Naruto's uncovered face, a replica of his shield, but made of light, protected him. Kuba kept trying to score hits on him, but the shield replica kept appearing when he was incapable of blocking. Akamaru had also started charging at Naruto, but his attacks were also met by the glowing shield. Naruto then started swinging his mallet at Kiba, but he dodged the attacks very easily, since Naruto still hadn't started developing his speed. Naruto had already figured a certain path in Kiba's attacks, so he knew his next attack was a straight heavy punch, so he put his shield in front of him, and, as the punch came he called shield tech. Reflect. The effect was seen, as soon as the fist met the glowing shield, Kiba was seen flying backwards, as if he was hit. What was that about Ragnell Sen asked Sumit Ragnell who explained her. The defender technique creates a shield of light that protects you against attacks that you can't see or block yourself in time. However it only takes a set amount of hits to disappear, and it doesn't block elemental spells, so I assume it doesn't work with either. The reflect tech creates an aura around the user's shield, and if the shield is hit, it returns the hit back to the opponent with the double of the strength, however it only lasts one hit, and it cancels other shield auras, which means Naruto is about to get hit they saw, as Kuba recovered from the reflected hit, and jumped at Naruto with a wild haymaker aimed at his head which he managed to block with his shield, but what he did not saw was Akamaru coming from behind, and tackling him in the legs at the same time which made him lose balance, and so he fell flat on his back. It seems that this round goes to Kiba Sensei Dragnell to the boys while Kiba just grinned, and Naruto was still trying to get up from the ground. I don't think it's fair that he has help, and I don't said Naruto once he managed to stand, referring to Akamaru. Well Naruto-kun since you're expected to be in the front line in a fight, sometimes you must fight against multiple opponents, so you need to get used to it. But, as you may have noticed you lack the speed necessary to keep up with Kiba's attacks, and return with your own, you were mainly on the defensive the whole time, so you know what we are going to work on next. And your training seemed to be going pretty good Kiba sent said Ragnell to the boys, and he noticed that Naruto looked a little upset that he lost the fight. What's wrong Naruto-kun? Asked Ragnell to the boy once they were returning to the Yamanaka compound, where Naruto was staying for the week. It's just that I couldn't do anything against Kiba, I just stood there, and took the punches, and I couldn't even touch him with my hammer said the boy while looking at the ground. Ragnell could see that the boy was disappointed. That's nothing to worry about Naruto-kun. Kiba is training in one of the assassin classes, so he's always going to be naturally faster than you. It doesn't matter since once your training starts kicking off you are going to be stronger, and more bulky. So even if he manages to hit you it will not do anything to you, and then you can use one of the many techniques to finish the match. It's just a matter of training hard, and working hard, so don't be sad Naruto-kun. After talking with Ragnell, Naruto felt a little better, but still losing wasn't a good feeling in his book, so he vowed to train harder, so that he could beat Kiba in the next spar. Thanks for watching my video, and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic, link is in the description, see you next time, till then sayonara.